So you've just bought a new graphics card for your PC and you're looking to squeeze every drop of performance you can out of it. There's no better way to do that than by overclocking. Today, I'm going to take you through my method of overclocking graphics cards, both the GPU and the memory using a program called MSI Afterburner. Now, this video applies to both AMD GPUs and Nvidia GPUs, although there will be some slight differences along the way, which I'll mention as we go along. Firstly, what are we actually doing when we're overclocking our graphics card and is it safe? Well, overclocking is simply increasing the number of clock cycles that your processor goes through per second. So with that increased rate of clock cycles per second, commonly referred to as clock speed, there's an inherent boost in performance since the processor is executing instructions at a faster rate. Using the tools that will be today, overclocking your graphics card is very safe, especially if you set conservative voltage, power and thermal limits. Now, before we go any further, let's first understand what these values are, seeing as these are the three limits that we're going to keep an eye on during the overclocking process. When we talk about voltage, we're referring to the amount of voltage that is being applied to the GPU core. For the most part, we can only manipulate this by around 50 millivolts, but this also depends on which graphics card you're using. If you don't increase your voltage when overclocking, you'll be limiting the potential clock speed that you could have otherwise reached. And if you increase the voltage too high, your GPU may become too hot. As a general rule of thumb, we're going to increase the voltage when our clock speed isn't stable. Power is the amount of watts that your graphics card is using and is expressed as a percentage. By default, your graphics card operates at a limit of 100%, but we can increase this limit to around 120% depending on your particular card so that we don't run into any power limit when we're overclocking. If you do happen to hit a power limit, the GPU will be forced to reduce its clock speed. And finally, we have the thermal limit, and this is simply the temperature limit that we can set on our GPU. If the GPU hits this limit, it'll downclock its clock speed to reduce its temperature. As I said before, we're going to be overclocking the GPU, which is this little chip here, and also the memory which are these little chips over here. But first let's talk about the difference between reference style cards such as this GTX 1070 here and the add-in board partner cards such as this gaming X1050 Ti from MSI. The reference style cards are not the best for overclocking so if you're using one of these cards do not expect great results. Hitting both power and thermal limits on these cards is quite common due to the conservative power delivery and poor cooling design. The aftermarket cooler on the MSI Gaming X is another story and you also do get a generous power connector here as well, allowing us to reach a power limit of 125% compared to the reference cards 112. This card has no problem with power or thermal limits as we'll see in a minute, so just some considerations before we begin. So make sure you've got MSI Afterburner downloaded, you can find the link in the description. For testing stability I'm going to be using Unigen Heaven 4.0, which I'll also leave a link to in the description, but any game running in windowed mode off to the side is honestly fine. Before we start moving all of the sliders and punching in some numbers, let's first take a look at what these numbers actually mean, as well as how to set up the user interface to monitor our graphics card. Note that I'm using a slightly different user interface than what comes stock, and you can change this by clicking settings and then going into the user interface tab. Probably a good idea if you select the same one that I'm using here, if you want to follow what I'm doing closely. Okay, so now let's break down the user interface. We have two gauges, one to the left here, showing the current GPU clock speed and memory clock speed, and on the right we have the current operating voltage and temperature of the GPU. GPU. These values update pretty much in real time, so we'll be keeping an eye on these closely when we're overclocking. Down at the very bottom here, we can view some more parameters that are actually graphed, and this is where we'll be watching our temperature, voltage, and power limit, as well as our GPU and memory clock. We'll detach these graphs in a second and set them up, but first let's look at these sliders. From top to bottom, we have voltage, power limit, temperature limit, your core clock, memory clock, and also your fan speed in the last slider here. Now, depending on your graphics cards, these sliders might be expressed differently. What I mean by that is for the most part, Nvidia GPUs will show these values as an offset, for example, plus 100, and usually AMD GPUs will show these values as absolute. Let's start with the voltage slider here at the top. We're only going to increase this when we really need to, and for this particular card we're using now, we're able to add 50 millivolts to our GPU core. I know that the slider says up to plus 100%, implying that we'd be adding 100% of our current voltage and hence 
doubling it, but that's not what's going on here. Yours may be different though, so just double check that. Moving down to our power limit, and as I said previously, we're pretty much going to set this to its max value right from the beginning, unless you want to restrict your GPU's power input for whatever reason. Yours may be 112%, 115%, or it could be up to 125% as I've got here. Next, we have the temperature limit, and this is completely up to you, but I usually leave this at 83 degrees. The GPU can handle a lot more than that, but if you care about the lifetime of your components, then it's probably not a good idea to having them run that hot all the time. The 1050 Ti that I've got in there at the moment barely reaches 65 degrees, so we definitely won't be running into any temperature limits here. But I will show you how we can implement a custom fan curve later with the much hotter GTX 1070 Founders Edition. Next are the core clock and memory clock sliders in megahertz, and here they're expressed as offsets. If you have a RX 470 or RX 480 or another AMD card, these will most likely be shown as an absolute value. For example, 1400 megahertz as opposed to plus zero megahertz as we have here. These are the sliders that will actually increase the clock speed of your graphics card and give you that boost in performance. And lastly, we have the fan speed. As I've said before, this card is absolutely fine being left on auto, but we'll take a look at the custom fan profiles later. So now that we know what all of these numbers mean, let's put MSI Afterburner off to the side and open Heaven 4.0. After running it for about 30 seconds, you'll notice that the GPU clock has already risen all the way up to around 1800 megahertz here. Now this is quite a bit higher than the GPU's advertised boost clock of 1493 megahertz. So what exactly is going on here? Well, this is Nvidia's GPU Boost 3.0, which you can think of sort of as a natural overclock that your GPU can achieve, so long as it's not getting too hot. It's a way of your GPU regulating its own clock speed, depending on the temperature that it's operating at, and it's definitely handy, but we can push a little bit beyond this by overclocking. Also note that the values that Unigen Heaven shows off in the top right hand corner for GPU and memory clock speeds are incorrect, so just ignore those. Before we start adjusting the settings, click the settings icon here as we first need to enable a couple things. First, enable start with Windows and start minimized. And what this means is that the overclock that you set in MSI Afterburner and save will be there all the time and you won't have to keep opening the program. That would be very annoying. Next, make sure enable hardware control and monitoring is selected and also unlock voltage control and unlock voltage monitoring. Now that that's done, we wanna go over to the monitoring tab and this is where we select the list of parameters that we want shown in the monitoring section. Make sure you select the tick right beside the parameter that you want enabled, but don't worry about showing them in the OSD, which you can disable down here. I'd recommend enabling power, GPU temperature, fan speed, core clock, memory clock, temp limit, power limit, voltage limit, and GPU voltage. Now with those enabled, they'll show in the monitoring section here as graphs. And to view this a little better, we're going to detach it so that we can view all of them at the same time. So now that that's done, we can finally begin overclocking. The first thing I recommend you do is set the power limit to max. This means that we're going to allow the GPU to use the maximum amount of power that it can. So for this 1050 Ti, that's 125%. The temperature limit we're going to leave set at 83 degrees. Seeing as I know this card will pretty much never reach that in any conditions, so I'm just going to leave it. If you do find that your GPU is overheating and starting to approach that number though, stay tuned to the end where we'll look at a custom fan curve to help that. Now, to start with, we're just going to be modifying the GPU clock speed here and we'll handle the memory clock speed afterwards. The strategy here is to keep increasing the GPU clock speed until it's unstable, in which case you'll begin to add voltage as needed. So to start off with, I'm going to add 100 megahertz to my GPU clock speed. This is going to add 100 megahertz to the the already boosted clock speed of 1784 megahertz. You'll see the new clock speed on the gauge in the left and also in the monitoring section here under core clock. Keep adding to the offset here on the core clock until the program crashes, freezes, or stutters. These will be indications that the clock speed is unstable at that voltage. So in my case, I was able to add 160 megahertz to the core clock without any problems, but jumping that up to 170 megahertz did crash the program. So I've reduced the offset back down to 150 megahertz, and I'm now going to start adding voltage. And an interesting thing happens here. Before I add the 100% of our available additional voltage, which in this case is 50 millivolts, Volts, the clock speed increases from 1932 megahertz up to 1961 megahertz. So just by increasing the voltage, the GPU clock will by default run a little bit quicker. Just keep an eye on your temperature though when adding more voltage, as you may not have as much headroom as I do here. You'll also see that the monitoring section is telling me that I'm hitting a temperature limit, but this is obviously not the case seeing as we're still sitting around 60 degrees.
degrees. Same situation with the power limit, as you can see in the top graph, we're really only using about 85% power. So if you see these bugs as well, just ignore them. The next thing you'll want to do is see if you can stretch that GPU clock a little bit more. Try adding about 10 megahertz at a time and test to see if that's stable. In my case, Heaven 4.0 crashed within about three minutes of trying anything above this offset of plus 150. So I'm just going to leave it there. Let's start increasing the clock speed of our memory. The strategy here is the same, just keep increasing until it's unstable. I was able to get mine all the way up to plus 850 megahertz, but as soon as I increased that to plus 900, the program freezed as you can see here. So I dropped it down to plus 875 and found that that was stable. Now that we've set a stable overclock, you'll want to save this preset so you can keep using it. Click the save icon to the right here and click any of these numbers. I personally like to have two presets, one for stock settings in preset one and one for my overclocked settings in preset two. Lastly, let's look at how you can set a custom fan curve. I've swapped out the 1050 Ti for the much hotter GTX 1070 Founders Edition. And to start, we're gonna click the gear icon next to fan speed to enable the custom fan profile. And you may notice your fans start to ramp up a little more than usual. This is because it's using the default fan profile in MSI Afterburner. So let's go in and change that. Click the gear icon in the bottom left and then select the fan tab. Next, select custom from the drop down menu and now you'll be able to manipulate the fan curve. This illustrates how you want the fan speed to increase as temperature increases. Now, I don't know about you guys, but I don't want my fan spinning at all if the GPU is below 30 degrees and just idling. So let's set the fan speed to zero in this range. The next part is a little hard to make universal recommendations on as it really depends on how hot your GPU is actually getting and how loud your fans are. I have the fan curve set pretty conservatively between 40 and 70 degrees but fairly aggressively between 70 and 83 degrees and this will prevent the GPU from ever really exceeding around 75. So with that custom fan curve in place we now see the GPU sitting around 7 or 8 degrees cooler and we're not going to hit that temperature limit this time around. Again don't forget to save the preset when you're done. Overall you should get around a 10% boost in frame rate after overclocking your graphics card and seeing as it's absolutely free performance I'd say it's definitely worth it. Let me know your results down below guys and if you have any questions questions at all, please feel free to post those as well. Thanks again for watching. Don't forget to like the video if you enjoyed and I'll see you all in the next one.